Hey, this is Eric and welcome to Control Alt Achieve for May 6th, 2019. Today's topic, the best ed tech resources from April 2019. So each month I come across loads and loads of interesting educational technology resources from the blogs that I read or the podcasts I listen to or videos that I watch or trainings that I attend. Now as I find these valuable resources, I like to collect them together into several ongoing Google documents, uh, one for different subject areas. Uh, I've got one for ELA, one for math, uh, science and STEM, another one for social studies. Um, and these documents that I collect these resources in, um, they are shared with comment rights enabled so anyone is allowed to and actually encouraged to uh, add your own suggestions for links to include. Now at the end of each month, I like to share my collected resources from that last month. For the month of April 2019, you can find all of the links that I collected in my blog post at www.controlaltachieve.com slash links 0419 as in April 2019. Now, in this episode, we're just going to take a quick look at five of my favorite links from that collection, but you can see all of the rest of the resources in my blog post. All right, so the first resource we're going to take a look at is one called the Most Dangerous Writing App. This can be found at www.themostdangerouswritingapp.com. Now this is a pretty interesting writing tool that functions a little bit differently than what we're used to seeing with an online uh, writing resource. For this particular one, the idea is you'll go to the site and you'll click start writing and basically you have to start writing and you can't stop writing. If you stop for more than five seconds, everything you've written will disappear. It'll auto delete. Uh, so it's sort of like the movie Speed. Um, instead of being a bus, it's a keyboard, I guess. That's sort of the idea. Uh, but the uh, point behind this is that uh, sometimes um, students might think a little too much about uh, trying to write and getting it just perfect rather than just getting the ideas out. And so if you're trying to encourage a fun activity where it's more of stream of consciousness, just get the ideas out and then go back later and clean it up and fix it, but just get it out, you should try out the most dangerous writing app. The second resource from last month was a neat little site I came across called Word Hippo. It is found at www.wordhippo.com. And the idea here is if you've got a vocabulary word and you're trying to learn more about it, you can come here and type in that word and you can find lots of neat things such as synonyms. There's also a tab here for antonyms. There's a tab for definitions of that word. There's also a tab for rhyming. So if you were trying to use that word in a poem and you're just kind of stuck and trying to find some good rhyming words for it, there's a tab here you can click on for sentences. So you can see that word being used in context, which can go a long way to understanding a word better. There's also a little uh, speaker icon that will read that aloud. In addition, we have a tab for translations where you can choose a different language you would like to translate that word into. And there's a tab for word forms where you can put the word in and then choose uh, what would be the verb version of that word or the noun or the adverb or the adjective version if there is such a version of that particular word in those other formats. Um, there's even a tab here called find words which is a neat way if you're trying to uh, look for a word that fits a particular criteria such as if you were playing Scrabble or words with friends or doing a crossword you could choose those different categories and then fill in as much as you know about the word to try to get matching options for that so word hippo just a really great collection of quick easy to use uh, tools for any vocab word that a student might be working with 
The third site that I'd like to feature from last month comes from CK12. Now, if you're not familiar with CK12, they've been around for a long time. It's a really neat organization that uh, is focused on creating uh, open educational resources, like basically online free textbooks. Now, this particular project from CK12 is called Brain Genie. You're going to find this at braingenie.ck12.org. And the idea behind this is it's sort of like their version of Khan Academy. I think that's maybe a fair comparison. What they've done here is they've collected resources for math starting at grade one, going up to pre-calculus, and then they've got science. They've got some middle school science, biology, chemistry, and physics. Now, this may grow as time goes on. At the moment, those are the particular subject areas and grade levels that they address. And what you can come in here is learn, practice, and quiz yourself on, at the moment, over 5,000 skills related to those particular subject areas. So the idea is you would pick your subject area, then you would pick a skill that you want to learn about. At that point, they would have an overview video right, that you can watch that will teach you all about that skill. And then that's followed up by a series of assessments that you can take. There's even a multiplayer game you can play to uh, match wits against another player online. And there's a unit challenge at the end of each of these units to see how you have done with the, that topic. So uh, for the moment, math and science if you're looking for a way to get some additional online training some resources some videos to teach these topics as well as assessments to check yourself check out brain genie from ck12 the fourth resource I'd like to share from last month is an oldie but a goodie that recently got a facelift, and that is Google Earth Engine Time Lapse. Now, if you haven't heard of this tool, it's really awesome. Basically, we all know that Google Maps has satellite imagery, um, but what does it do with all of the old satellite imagery from years ago every time they update it with recent images? Well, that's all collected together in Google Earth Engine time lapse, where basically you can see, you can pick any location on Earth, and then you can see the last 35 years of satellite imagery for that location played out like a video. So you could take a look at a town as it grows over time, or a river as it changes course, or a coastline as it erodes, or a glacier if it were to be melting. Uh, this allows you to basically pick any place on Earth and watch 35 years of changes to that location. This could be a fantastic application in classes uh, where it's science and you're looking at the changes in the Earth over time, or if it is an um, elementary class and you're talking about your own neighborhood and just want to see the growth of your town over time. Now, Google Earth Engine can be found at earthengine.google.com slash timelapse. And although it's been around for a while, the updates it got recently is just a new layout, a, a, new, uh, a new interface to make it a little bit easier to navigate, as well as they've added some additional years. I think it used to be like 32 years of imagery, imagery and now it's 35. So definitely check this one out and see how our world has changed. And for the fifth and final resource to highlight from last month is one called, I, I think it's pronounced Gazaz, Gazaz. Um, it's spelled G-Z-A-A-S, and the website is just that, uh, G-Z-A-A-S.com. Gazaz.com, and this is just a really neat tool. Anytime you need to put something up on your screen, nice and large for your students to be able to read. Basically, it's really simple. You just come here and you type in your message, whatever uh, text you need the students to see, and you click the Gazaz it button. And when you do that, it takes that text and it displays it large on the screen. Now, there's a lot of different styles you can choose from, so you can pick a style that. Uh, uh, fits what you're trying to share with the students or just looks kind of cool, I guess. <laughs> you can also, of course, adjust those styles as well. There's different buttons here to change the background color and the font and the font color and so forth. Very simple, very easy to use, but a great way if you need to be able to put something up for either your students or if you're conducting a training and you need people to uh, see some information up on the screen, some text nice and large real quick for them to be able to see. That is Gazaz. Check it out. 
So those are just five of my favorite resources from April 2019. If you would like to see the full list of the dozens and dozens of resources from last month, please do so by visiting my blog at www.controlaltachieve.com slash links 0419, as in April 2019. And if you have some resources that you think would be great to add for next month, please do. The Google Docs for each subject area, the ELA, Math, Science, Social Studies, Google Docs, those are all linked in at the top of that blog post uh, so that you can access them. And remember, they do have comment rights enabled. So you can suggest your own links and resources to add to that document, and I would greatly appreciate it. And of course, in addition to that, you can always share any questions, comments, other resources, and feedback that you have in several ways. Please feel free to leave comments below the blog post, uh, leave comments on the YouTube video, uh, leave a review in iTunes, tag me on Twitter, I'm at Eric Kurtz, or you can always send an email to eric at controlaltachieve.com, and I will try to share these comments from time to time in future episodes. So until next episode, be kind to each other and be kind to yourself. Take care.